Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, I am going to attempt to push back on a term that I've been hearing since I came back into the hobby in 2017. And to be honest with you, the term was nonsensical to me then, and it is nonsensical to me now. But in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain why, and maybe you can help me to understand it. So don't be shy about sounding off in the comment section. The term that I am referring to is low grade is better than no grade. I struggle with the phrasing and I struggle with the mindset as well. First and foremost, what does it mean? What does low grade actually mean? Depending upon who you are, you're going to draw that line in the sand in a slightly different place. Some people say anything below a five, some anything below a four, some a three, so on and so forth. And so where the line gets drawn is dependent upon the person. So it doesn't actually have a true definition. And, and that's part of where I struggle because our hobby in many ways is built upon nuance. It is built upon the fine details. Are there defects? Are there stress lines? Are there spine ticks? Is it first print, second print, first appearance, second appearance? You know, is it the pink writing or the red writing? Because that makes a difference. Nuance is what our hobby is built upon. And this phrase of low grade better than no grade essentially just washes away all the nuance and, and it's left up for interpretation as to what it actually means. And as a result of that, it means nothing, yet people repeat it time and time again to almost excuse them purchasing a book that they know isn't really an attractive book. They know is a book that has lots of defects. It's a way to say it's okay because I have it. At least I have it right? It's low grade. It's okay, but I still have it. I would argue that not having something is better than having something, especially when what you have doesn't meet your standards. Think about that for a second, right? It, in my mind, it's better to not have something than to have something that you know doesn't meet your standards. Now, this is not an attack on those people that are making a purposeful decision to buy lower grade comics for whatever reason, whether it be affordability, whether it's the standard that they've set for themselves. This is not a criticism of those people that make a conscious decision to buy lower grade comics and those comics actually make them happy. This is me pushing back on these people that buy these lower grade comics as like a placeholder, as something to be part of the crowd. At least I have it. I'm one of the guys because I now have this book in my collection when they know that they're not happy with the book. That's where I start to struggle because in my mind, you would be better served not spending your hard earned money on something that does not bring you happiness. You might be better served keeping that cash in your pocket, adding to it over time and buying the book that you really want versus taking that cash, buying something that doesn't make you happy and then watching that thing actually lose value. Because that's essentially what has happened over, let's just say the last year or so. A lot of people were priced out of books that they really wanted. And because they were priced out of those books, they started to make concessions and they started to buy lower grade books just so that they could have the book in their collection. Those books have now subsequently lost value. They were more affordable, yes, but now that things in terms of the economy and in terms of the hobby have taken a dip, those books have also taken a dip. You might have been better off just keeping the cash in your pocket versus spending it on a book that has now lost its value because that just puts you further behind in getting the book that you ultimately want. And a lot of people would say, hey, I'm just going to buy this now as a placeholder and I'm going to upgrade later more than likely you're not, <laughs> right? Like, and more than likely you're not for a couple of reasons. One, you spent, let's just say, the book that you wanted was $1,000. The book that you bought was $300. That book that you bought for $300 is now worth $150. 
The book that you really wanted was a thousand, but it's now 500. Had you kept the 300 in your pocket, you could have earned your way towards the extra two to get the book that you really wanted had you been more patient versus spending 300 to lose 150 of it and to be no closer to the book that you actually want. Low grade is not better than no grade. It is not. We have to stop saying it because it is just not true. And again, if you are buying lower grade books because that is the standard that you have set for your collection, if you are buying those books because they're more affordable and those books make you happy, get after it. Just do it. But if you are buying books because they just happen to be more affordable because the book that you really want you can't get right now, don't. Just don't buy the book. Be patient. Don't get swept up in the FOMO. Don't get swept up in being part of the crowd that you're making bad decisions because of some phrasing that people repeat time and time again to excuse decisions that they've made. It's your money. More than likely, you worked pretty hard for that money, so don't waste it by buying something that does not bring you happiness. I personally have a standard for my collection, and my standard is I don't buy incomplete books. I don't buy books with rusted staples, right? When it comes to modern books, I prefer as close to, if not a 9.8 as possible. When it comes to older books, I start to play with that depending upon the cost. And sometimes a 3.0, a 4.0 is the sweet spot because of how much that book costs. But when I buy that book, when I buy that 3.0 or that 4.0 of that really expensive book, I am happy with that book because I am making a conscious decision to buy that book at that grade. That is a decision that I'm making and I'm not just buying into this low grade is better than no grade mantra and spending my hard earned money willy nilly. My goal here is to offer up a few things for people to think about and to consider. And if I've gotten this wrong, Please sound off in the comment section. Help me to understand how low grade is better than no grade. Help me out with that. I'm going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do so. Go ahead and tap that button, turn on notifications, and that way you won't miss out on any of the content that I release. And if you want to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram because that by far is the best way to get in touch with me. Take care. This thing on. Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yo. Should you practice art or should art be your practice? I had a question so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically but to my inner God you know. The one that's going to be a master, the one that's more than a rapper, the one that's an educator, the one that seeks enlightenment, he travels with concepts, he's got the mindset expansive, he understands that his time combined with travel and concepts makes his mind convex, sort of like when you look at a brain scan, straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect, now we in distinct rooms of pure souls having them conversations, synergy and combinations, you blind, we waiting, Indian style and the gold.